maybe one day we can turn the tide. If we can create a space, and I believe that's what we're doing with the show, a space for people to say, wait a second, um, is that true? Is that what I want for my life? And what to even be asking the question, what does the best version of my life look like? I think there's a lot of folks that never ask that question. We really do believe that this is something that should shift or change the way other people communicate with each other. Welcome to another episode of the Living Richly Podcast. Hard to believe we're celebrating a year in the books. This is episode 53, which means we've got a full wow. year worth of shows uh, already behind us. Crazy to think uh, how fast Absolutely it's incredible when you think about the journey of everything that we have experienced from some of the guests, the learning that we've had, the input from so many of our of our listeners. It's what a journey it's been, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, like the evolution over a short period of time. I mean, uh, uh, just over one year has been amazing. But, you know, the question that uh, perhaps people are wondering about is why do we keep doing this every week? We know of a lot of shows that uh, start off strong and perhaps after a dozen shows, they kind of peter off. And here we are. Uh, 52 episodes behind us, many more ahead of us. Why do we do this every week? Well, this is going to sound corny, but I, it's because of the listeners. And when we started uh, Living Richly, it was about us. And I think it was just being able to uh, express, communicate this change that was happening right. in our lives. And we were just so fired up by it. And of course, you created that initial model that we all began to embrace and take in. And it was really powerful to see that. Uh, but it really is about the 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 vulnerability vulnerability of the listeners, the comments, the the way they've been communicating with us about the the changes in their lives and the way that this has impacted uh, their their stories. Uh, one of the most significant of those and really was absolutely uh, just got me. I, mean, I remember the first time I read the comment, I, I, I just had all the feels, <laughs> right, was was a was a, a listener who com- was commenting on actually on Steve Warren's episode, episode 22. Steve's uh, here, by the Steve. way. Steve. Hey, and, and in Steve's episode where he talked about the locker room and guys and not really being able to, you know, their feelings and, and that whole locker room culture. Uh, and this listener com- was sharing with us about uh, an experience their son had mm. uh, in a locker room recently. Right, I remember And that. how it was still happening today. And they made a statement. It was the last sentence of their comment to us. Maybe one day we can turn the tide. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. and the two of us yeah. just got so fired up over the idea that what we are doing with this Living Richly podcast is, uh, we believe, is this is a movement that we have begun to experience as more and more listeners get on board. Uh, we really do believe that this is something that should shift or change the way other people communicate with each other. 100%. I mean, when we think about why do we keep doing this, right? I mean, we invest a significant amount of time uh, yep. every single week. Uh, lots of love, lots of labor goes into producing producing the show. Uh, and it is truly about, uh, I loved how you sum that up at the beginning. It was an expression of what was happening in our lives yeah. and a desire to share it. Uh, and yet now this has really taken on a life of its own. I don't know if we, I don't know if we could stop doing it. I think this thing is, is alive now. It's a, there's, there's a community that's gathering around it. Uh, I just think of the significant evolutions in 12 months, you know, uh, we started with what it was, it was two ex preachers and a farmer. Yep. Um, and then we were, Half and it, and that was some fantastic conversations uh, during those early episodes. And then we were, I think, around episode twenty-five. Uh, Trevor, who was a founding member of the show and and contributed so much to its uh, to its launch and and its early days, uh, who made a decision to pursue some other things that were really important to him, and it was a tough decision for him. And I still remember being a little bit <laughs> like, "Oh no, you know, now here what? we are. Yeah. We're only twenty episodes in, and and we've been kind of going in this direction, and now this." significant change happens and yet it's amazing to me how when you have a vision or a dream for something sometimes we can get so caught up in the how uh and and we had no idea what would happen but ever since now the addition of Kate and Wendy to the show and bringing that that much needed that yeah. crucial uh female perspective to these conversations uh and and the growth of the uh the movement and the and the, the listenership and the audience i mean it's just been amazing it, to watch it it's a journey and and again it's uh, i'm going i feel like i'm going to be the master of clichés today right i've already said you, it's you kind, it's all kind, about the listeners you kind and, of uh, are on most and, days and, uh, yeah th- wow thank you uh that's not an accomplishment. 
compliment. Uh, but no, but this is a journey. And like most journeys in life, you can't, we, we like to be able to predict where it's going, yeah. uh, but we can't even see beyond the next corner. We can't even see beyond the next hill. Uh, and what we create, what we thought we were creating when we started this uh, and where we are, there are absolutely still all kinds of elements from those early days that are still true today. The foundation of what living richly is, is hasn't changed right right but if anything it's matured it's matured and it's so it has changed still, yeah. but it's but it's and i was going to say it's the expression of that mm. foundation which has really you know grown and matured and we've seen it from whether it's the quality of our guests to having kate and wendy join all of these elements that have brought that have come uh to be part of what the show is uh we've really just been amazing to look back and and, and like you uh i you know i remember that first episode i remember the episode where we did it where trevor was the last episode he was on where he did his goodbyes, right? And, and kind of like, and, yeah. and we joked, but we were intentional about even the vulnerability around the oh shit moment yeah. that that caused yeah. uh, and how we navigated through it. And, and you know, fortunately, and I think as we look at it, the, the show's done quite well. Uh, thank you very much. And I, 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 you know, I really am pleased with what we've been able to see uh, evolve from the show. The universe conspires with us. And you make the commitment. Absolutely. The, we're so familiar with the phrase, the universe conspiring against me. Yeah. But I believe when you follow your heart, when you make the commitment, you're going to have oh shit moments. You're going to have, oh no, now what do I do? Uh, but truly behind the scenes, the universe is, is, is orchestrating things in a way that sometimes is hard to understand. We're going to get to some list feedback you you guys have been uh giving us amazing feedback over the course of the last 12 months and we want to share some of that feedback uh today and invite you to participate even more in uh where the podcast is going but rob what was what's been your favorite when you look back over the last 12 months your favorite living richly moment uh in what are this is episode 52 so 52 shows that we've done what's your favorite living richly moment Wow, I, I I know what mine is. Oh wow, okay, good for you. I do. Um, I don't it's know when it's when Stu, uh, stuntman Stu, was on the show. Oh no, here and he, goes. Uh, uh, he looked across. You, he was sitting beside you over there. Uh, and blah, blah, blah 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 blah. And he looked over and he says, "There, what? I was once as fit as him." And he passed you over, looked at me, and said, "I was once as fit as his, Eric." His, and you felt a little bit dated. He, his hand bounced off my belly as he pointed it towards you. And uh, yeah, Stu, if you're listening, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that was that was a pretty funny moment. We had a good laugh about uh, yeah. about that, both on the air and after. Uh, and uh, I do note that uh, it didn't make the final. I made the final edit of the full episode. Yeah, it didn't make one of the shorts, one and I really appreciate no. that it didn't make we're, one. We're gonna, we're gonna and go the back reason and it didn't, that. it was because I was editing the highlight reels that week. Um, <laughs> oh, so you took you took some cre- you made I, a creative directive. I, I made some I made some decisions there. Yeah. I you know there 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 have been a lot of moments and I think maybe I could highlight two uh that have been favorites for me. Uh well there, again there's been so many. One would be that that episode the first episode that we did uh, after the farewell to Trevor. Thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh that episode where we kind of sat there and went okay it's uh two ex preachers doesn't have as compelling a ring to it. Um <laughs> uh, but you know I knew I mean we we go way back uh for those of you that are listening you, yeah, we, we've known each other for for uh, way too long uh and i think maybe a time for a break uh, really? no uh okay. we've known each other for a very long wow. time. wow uh, for, folks you heard it um, first here on the show rob and i are taking a break <laughs> the band is breaking up <laughs> Uh, and, uh, no, 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 it's not, uh, the, you know, we've, we've, we've seen a lot together. Uh, and I knew that we would be able to, the interaction, the banter would be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but was just going to be like, what will look with the, the show look like as we make that shift. And again, as I say, it, it really happened well. The other one, I, I think for me on a, just completely personal level was was that first episode where Kate and Wendy were uh, here with us, uh, and of course that first episode was they were they were coming in by Zoom, uh, they weren't in in studio with us. Uh, but just the you know this was something right from almost the 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 moment that Wendy and I began dating as we were communicating and we went through the values deck that we've used. We did those values together, uh, and we began to explore early on what is living richly as a couple. Right, and right. part of that. Was 
was how amazing it would be to be able to do this stuff together. Right. Uh, and, it, you know, and as you know, I was many times, hey, guys, uh, what about living richly as a cup? And we weren't ready then. I, that, exactly. uh, absolutely not. Yeah. But the show became that. But that was a special moment for sure is to, to finally have that moment where we were here with these two women who have so impacted our lives and, and really have helped shape uh how we live richly yeah i would uh, i would echo that i and it's not you, that I'm you just better <laughs> right, right kate if you're listening i echo that no yeah. <laughs> uh no but I, I thought of those same two moments actually and for me i i think that show where it was the first time the two of us together um and we're kind of wondering what where's the future of the show going and uh how's it gonna are we gonna be able to negotiate this turn and and i remember being set up in the corner of my little office at home and we're shooting the show in this like very cramped space and then it would move to the bedroom next door and eventually um uh down uh here here in this uh great studio uh that will continue to evolve over time and the, again the addition of the ladies to the show i've heard so much feedback from listeners um h- about how rich that has been and, and so speaking of what we've yeah. heard about from yeah. listeners uh we've picked some uh some highlights here and why don't you kick us off rob with uh, some of the feedback that that we've ha- received from our audience yeah and i and i I do want to say thank you to all of you that listen. Uh, we so appreciate uh, every one of you. Uh, for those of you that take the time to, you know, certainly like or share uh, the episodes, those are always special for us. Uh, but many of you that have uh, given us your comments, and some you do that through email, you do it through comments on the channel, uh, on a particular episode, wherever that might be. Thank you so much. It's so deeply appreciated uh, by time. both of us, and it does fire us up. And we want to encourage you to continue to do that. If you're listening, even on this episode, we'd love to hear what was your, if you've been a follower of the, uh, of the show for a while, what's been some of your most uh, profound moments, special moments. We'd love to have you share those in the comments and, and eat whether again, whether email or comment to us. Um, we, we, we've got a number of raving fans yep. uh, who have shared lots of comments and Matthew is one of those. Yeah. And, and Matthew is somebody who is a psychologist who has shared many comments? He's the one that you know. You know, certainly has shared some profound well, emotional us regu- times. Regular feedback, gives right? Us He'll some email great us feedback. and say, "Hey, about this episode. So appreciative for how you're approaching that subject. Yeah, he's been, he's been such a great support. Just, just so much of it. Uh, he one of his very first uh, emails to us, the first feedback that he gave us. And I'm going to read this from my screen because I want to get it right. But this was something that Matthew said when he said, "I think the thing that sticks out to me most about the whole thing is that it's nice to see regular everyday." Men of our relative vintage, I love how he worded vintage. that, uh, who are talking about feelings. Yes, plural. That made me laugh when one of you pointed out that there is more than just rage available to us as fe- as fellas in a non cringy way. I would like to mandate, and the, this was powerful. Was, I would like to mandate that young men who grow up in relatively individualistic uh, culture listen to you guys. That is so powerful. He, I mean, for him to say, I would like to mandate, I'd like oh. to make this sort of like. Like uh, uh, table stakes that that young men growing up. I think part of what really fires me up, and we know that this show is not a male only show. Even from the get go, we've had a very strong female audience, and that'll only continue to grow uh, with Kate and Wendy participating. Uh, but I, part of what fires me up is that we are providing a safe uh, place for men uh, to to shed some of that toxic masculinity that we are all raised on, where it's not okay to talk about your feelings. It's not okay to talk about what's going on. It's not okay to show weakness. And so we end up building this false bravado, this false front. And I think there's a ton of men out there, and, and you may be listening right now, and you're dying on the inside as a result. Uh, You may be successful, you may uh, be achieving your goals, but there's something deep down that's really missing. It's because you can't access it. You you haven't been trained on how to access, right, the the, the realms of your heart and your emotional life and your passions and desires in a way uh, that, that is freeing. And I think we provide that context and and it's and it's not an either or and that's what i love and i love what and and matthew points this out about breaking the stereotype you know uh we love off-roading we love cigars and whiskey and and uh we love you know manly things right like i don't know whatever that means right like yeah our Uh, women (laughs) yeah exactly we love our women uh we're we're into sports and we're into all of these things that are the stereotype 
We also love being vulnerable yeah. and we embrace the notion that you can connect with other men, that you can cry together, you can cheer together, you can you can grow together uh, and that it doesn't separate. One is not separate from the other, right, that you right. can be both. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I think, one of the most powerful things that we've been uh, communicating over these times. I, I think this whole notion, this whole falsehood of the strong and silent type that we've all been raised, that that's what a good boy does that's what a a good man does the strong and silent type and i think it's uh uh, elizabeth lesser in her book cassandra speaks she says it's time to start advocating for a brave and open type of masculinity as opposed to strong and silent and i you know i i I think of how far we've come i think of how how far i've come to watch your your growth in all of this i can't possibly imagine going backwards and to that place where you feel limited, you feel capped, you feel like you're, you have to be somebody that you're not, uh, to experience the freedom that the living richly message brings, uh, and that it embodies has been, has been absolutely yeah. amazing. And, and, and that, and that's so true. I, I love that you said that Eric, cause it is, uh, we are on this journey. We, we didn't start out at the, at episode one saying, hi, we figured it all out. So now let's teach you. No, we, we recognize we're on this journey and over the last year, a man, the amount of growth that I've experienced in my own life and you've experienced in your life. And as we've, we've now put into practice some of these things that were, were, were kind of principles that we are learning and reading, but now we're putting it into practice. And you're right. I, sometimes there are days where I'm sitting back and I'm going through whatever that emotional, where in the past would cripple me. Yeah. And now it's just kind of that energy flows through me and I'm able to look at it and I'm like, wow, like to be at this place, talk yeah. about freedom. Yeah. Uh, and it, what an incredible experience. Yeah, I just got the uh, image in my mind of uh, Mel Gibson in uh, Braveheart uh, where he yells freedom at the end. Right. You know? I mean, kind of a glory. I mean, he is he dies in that moment, but <laughs> yeah, you know. We, we could separate that part out. But this we can yell should, freedom but not die. We, we just be not great. die. But yeah, I think yeah. it truly is about that, the, the liberty and the freedom that comes from it. You know, we had uh, Tannis Vine who's been in our networks for uh, a long time and she's just a, a fantastic fan of the show and, and uh, she wrote us early on um, I think you're sharing an important message and helping others dust off their thinking caps to think more seriously about their own lives and how to live their best one. So thank you for all of that. And again, I think this notion of creating a safe space where we can challenge uh, traditional thinking, conventional thinking. We can challenge the supposed life mentality of doing things according to what they tell us to do. I, I'm always curious, who the hell are the they's that yeah. set these standards that we all feel then chained to? They sure have a lot of power. They sure do. Absolutely, right? These these societal expectations, these family expectations, these uh, male-female expectations. There's so many different lenses we could apply but if we can create a space, and I believe that's what we're doing with the show, a space for people to say, wait a second, um, is that true? Is that what I want for my life? And what to even be asking the question, what does the best version of my life look like? I think there's a lot of folks that never ask that question. Uh, the the word and words matter, right? And the word out of her uh, quote, uh, out of out of her uh, uh, feedback to us, uh, the the notion of uh, to think more seriously, right? To 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 see this as one of the most important things that you can do, uh, not just for yourself. But for the people in your life, for your community, for, you know, dare I say, just the world at large, the most one of the most significant, important things you can do is take more seriously how you show up your life and living your best life. Uh, and, and I think that that's that. it just inspires me for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think Jim Harrington, who's been on the show, a big influence. We were just with him earlier this week via Zoom as he does regular training with our team. And uh, if you haven't watched those episodes, you want to go back and watch them. He's been a big, big influence on us and a huge influence on me uh, for for what has been many years now. Uh, but I remember him saying to me, uh, Rob, years ago, uh, that the biggest reason uh, th- that people do not reach their f- don't reach their full potential, the main inhibition, the main limiting factor, is that we don't stop often enough to think deeply about what we're doing and where our life is going. We just go with the, we just roll with the punches, so to speak. Yeah. We just let life kind of happen. 
Um, and, and as a result, we miss out on, on our full potential. And speaking to Jim, he sent us a great piece yeah. after our episode on spirituality. This one fired us up. This was the wind episode. I remember this was, was an episode we were all struggling with because of our past and not sure how to express what we believe. But uh, he said, uh, yesterday morning, I listened to your spectacular podcast on spirituality. He said, wow, amazing. You asked questions, expressed doubts, shared some of how you're finding your pathway forward. You affirmed how messy the process is and made space for a wide variety of ways to take the journey you're taking. I laughed and cried and was inspired. Thank you. This is coming from my mentor. So I remember when he sent us this, that just blew me away. But this whole notion, again, you hear safe space. You made space for it. You acknowledged how messy this whole journey of of living your best life and reaching your full potential, that it's not just a straight shot to success, that it's filled with detours and unexpected uh, scenarios, like when the show took a shift earlier yeah. this year into what it's evolved now. Um, but that that it's okay. We I think as many as, as often as we try to bring some of the answers that we're discovering, uh, to your point, I think we're on a journey just like everyone else. I know we are, and we're on that journey in many ways with our audience, with yeah. our listeners, uh, and we're learning so much from from their questions and their feedback uh but i think it's more about creating a safe place to ask questions like to really just hold things that we perhaps have just accepted wholeheartedly but now to hold them a little more loosely and say is there a better way and and it's not easy and and one of the things that you know probably one of the most profound lessons that i've learned along this journey even is that it isn't easy uh it it is it is difficult for even for us to continue to show up with the vulnerability with the vulnerableness with the create that safe space to have these conversations we recognize we all have our scripts and you know uh, uh we just recently i think just probably a, a, a couple of weeks ago we had an episode uh on forgiveness and right. and we really looked into the the forgiveness of self right uh, and and the idea of because that's such an easy thing to yeah, do. Yeah, and we talk about regrets. And one of the comments that you made on that episode was, you know, the the, the person who says they have no regrets that's bullshit. bullshit. We all have regrets. I have regrets. Uh, and and we know that when we're vulnerable on an episode, that there may be those they're probably not listening. But if they were watching or listening, are pointing, going, I know Rob from this and that, and he's full of shit. He's not that way. And I, you know, I had a different experience with that person. Yep. And right. that's part of the vulnerability is to recognize that I we didn't show up with in this way in the past with with individuals and with others. So the idea that we're the vulnerability takes dare I say courage. Yeah. It takes a willingness. It's deliberate, but it's fucking hard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it it it's uh, risky to put yourself out there. And to your point, sometimes there is the fear that people who knew a past version of you m- may look at you and say, but hey, that's not what I remember. That's not the person I remember. And actually, I've learned to embrace that as uh, a badge of honor. Uh, actually, when someone tells me like, you've really changed. We were actually uh, on a photo shoot this week, uh, right, with our team. We had our team offsite. Uh, this is for Rhapsody and our the coaches that uh, uh, comprise our team. And and uh, we were using the same photographer we've used many times in the past, Robin of Unposed. There's a free plug for you, Robin. Such an amazing, amazing lady. Um, and she made the comment to me two or three times during the day. She says, "You look you 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 photograph very differently today." And I said, "Well, what do you mean by that?" She says, "You seem so free. You seem so happy." She, wow. she said, In the past, there was always a hesitation. There was always, I could sense this, this anxiety and it's because there, there was an awful lot of anxiety. So isn't it interesting that even just someone who knows us more casually, uh, right, just photographing us can pick up on the subtle changes or the growth that happens. And I think that's the point. If, if you're watching the show and you're going, that's not the Rob I remember, that's not the Eric I remember, I'd be like, good, yeah, because right. we're evolving and yeah. we're changing and yeah. that's ultimately the it, goal. It's been so rewarding to have the feedback from those who have said, you know, boy, we needed this space and this is so amazing. It's been even more rewarding when we get feedback from people that talk about how it's impacted their own life oh, yeah. and how it's changed them. And I, you know, I wrote one down here that I, uh, that it was somebody that had sent it to me and then I shared it with, with, uh, with you. And it's this, uh, you know, let me just read a little bit of their, their comments. You know, I've been on a healing journey for a long time and for me, it's been baby steps at best. I have been carrying around so much shame my entire life wow. and trying to get better, trying to accomplish more in my career. And I've never felt good enough. I give my inner critic too much credit. I was so lost. I felt so worthless. It's been 
over a year and I think I'm finally back on my journey of healing again. Wow, so powerful. You you think incredible comment. To, to think that we play even a small, a small role, part. like a yeah. small role uh in that epic story that's unfolding uh with this individual. The, the, let's face it, like the I'm not good enough is universal. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting here watching this or listening on your favorite podcast platform, you're not alone in that struggle. I, every human being struggles with being enough, this sense of worthiness, right? We talk about radical self-acceptance, <laughs> yeah. right? Like yeah. that that you are enough. And, and if we can just help people, uh, uh, even just move them down the, that that journey and nudge them just along a little bit more. Uh, I think here our, our job is done. I think of a young leader that I've been working with for for several years now, and he's been going through a very significant, um, uh, 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 difficult time in his personal life, and um, and he's courageous as hell. Like it's been hard. He's he's pretty broken, but I I'm watching him emerge as he's doing the work and he's facing his demons and he's right. But that 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 inner critic, right, is so, so strong. But he's told me time and time again, just told me again yesterday that uh, so many times when he's feeling low, he'll put one of the episodes on and there and and oftentimes it'll make him tear up just because it's the right message at the right time in his journey. Uh, and again, I, 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 I'm so uh, excited or, or I feel so uh, privileged to be able to say like, there are stories we will never hear right. of folks who live and listen to the show, but to see it in the lives of people that we're touching, that are in our community, and to watch the transformation is is absolute transformation. It, it's funny how uh, and you you say that there's going to be so many lives that we're not even aware of that right. you know that you know shared from shared and shared. You know, a listener shares it with someone else, and they're impacted, and they, they we never hear about it. I I always laugh because sometimes it's when I'm I'm not thinking about the show. I I you know one of my favorite things, and it's happened now. I got to say at least a dozen times uh, in the last year where I'm at the gym, I'm getting ready. We're about to, a class is going to start in a few minutes and somebody comes into the studio to get, that, that's going to be in the, in the class and they bring it up. They make a comment. Oh, I'm listening to the, the podcast and that episode just got me all fired up. I'm ready to go. And there's one guy in particular, he's been a long time listener of the show, uh, another guy by the name of Rob and, and, and Rob will walk into the studio and he does it, you know, from time to time he walks in and as he walks in, he, if he sees me, and I happen to be in the class with him. He lifts up his phone, and there's the podcast. He's listen as he walks over to the gym. He's listening to it. Yeah. Uh, just those little things that where we're not even in the moment. We're not even thinking about it. It's like wow, this is this is beyond us. Uh, and that's pretty special to see. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's bigger than we all are. I I think of another leader who just recently told us that uh, uh, she's a big fan of the show, uh, and uh, I, during a very difficult time where she was grieving the loss of her husband of seventeen years, right. that the show was a source of great comfort, uh, of great uh, uh, encouragement, and and through her grieving process. So again, uh, for those of you that have been tuning yeah. in, uh, whether you've been tuning in uh, a little or a lot, or whether you've been with since the beginning or you're a more recent fan of the show uh this really is about you it's about helping you reach your full potential and live your best life and it's just an honor and a privilege for rob and i and kate and wendy to be part of that journey yeah it really is i think you need to share one more piece of listener feedback and that's the another piece from matthew yeah uh, about yeah. his sons yeah and i think that it was it was i i'm again we we're so how fired up we were and it was in a, in a feedback that he provided us and he gave us permission to sh- to, to share this, where he was talking about how an experience that he had just had, uh, where he was walking down the street and was, was name, you know, uh, a name was thrown at him that I don't want to, I'm not even going to repeat on the show, but, but the, and then the struggles again of that locker room experience and all of that stuff and how incredibly, uh, emotional those moments were for him. And, uh, and again, as we mentioned already, he, he brings up the notion of what if we could change the tide? What if we could just, uh, if yeah. we could find, and I remember I came out in that next step episode after we read that and we were like let's talk about this and I had my proud dad shirt on and I was ready to go to bat with anybody that is just like like when can we stop uh, tearing other people down uh, and that's when the whole notion of living richly the, the living richly nation was really birthed out of that that this is a movement this is a cause this is this is something more radical than just oh hope you feel good about your life 
Right? Uh, what, what, <laughs> where the hell did that voice know, come from? Know, <laughs> Can you do that again? Nope. <laughs> no, it's a one-off. I've, I've never heard one-off. you do yeah, that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, Steve can loop it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he will. Oh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but there, but it was just this this rawness to his words uh, and the emotion of that in that moment, and we felt like we have a platform, and we're going to use this platform to speak life. Yeah, uh, into the communities that. that hear it. I love that. Uh, it's it's so powerful to to be um, uh, a different kind of voice. Yeah, to, to to spread a different kind of message. And 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 speaking of the message, right? When when you look back over the last twelve months, Rob, I mean, there's been so many guests, so many great conversations. But what has been for you some of the most pivotal lessons that have been shared, or 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 or, or, or transforming truths, if I can put it that way, uh, that have most impacted you? Uh, without a doubt, at the top of that list, uh, and and probably like with a huge gap, uh, and it was when you introduced the the language. Uh, we all understand the notion of self accept. Uh, you, uh, you need to accept yourself, right? We need to. We need. But when you used when you added the word radical to that radical self acceptance, and I remember the first time. Uh, you use, I don't even know, it might've been on a show. It might've been just in a conversation separately. It might've been in something you wrote. Uh, I don't remember that, but I just remember how that just went. And it was like, this all hinges on radical self-acceptance. 100%, 100%. Uh, Without radical self-acceptance, without that, absolutely not just, yeah, I'm okay. No, no, you're not okay. It's not about you being okay. It's about you are loved. You are, you are all that you need to be. There is no more that you need to right. achieve, right? Yeah. You are more than enough. That radical self-acceptance, right? At, without a doubt, the top lesson and, and something that wasn't there even on day one of Living Richly for me, uh, it has been the probably the piece that I've embraced the most over this year. Yeah, if I, and, I, and uh, I, I really like that you zeroed in on that. What was the phrase we used back then? Um, that uh, I, I will never be... I'm as worthy, no, I'm as worthy as I'll ever be, but I'm still becoming the best version of right. me, right? And I think it was this whole, I remember for me, that was so transformational, radical self-acceptance, right? That's where it starts. From there, we can go to radical self-care. When we believe we're worthy, then we will make sure that we're good, right? We'll invest in ourselves and and, and understand that that is the least selfish thing we can do, which ultimately then le- leads to radical self-expression, showing up as the best version of you in every role in every relationship. And for me, the story before that, instead of radical self-acceptance, it was deep self-loathing, right? right? (laughs) Instead of radical self-care, it was running on fumes. And instead of radical self-expression, at best, it was partial activation. And and so that's been transformational for me as well. Yeah. And we've got a number, and again, I encourage you, if you're new to the the podcast, really want to encourage you to take a look at some of those uh, older episodes. There's a number of them on uh, radical self-acceptance. We'll include a couple of them in the show notes. Uh, if you go to the website, livingrichly.me, you'll find the show notes for each of the episodes. We'll make sure that those are included there as well. But it's such a powerful notion, I think, for sure. Another one for me was 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 a recently with a guest. And I, when we talk about even some of the most special moments, I remember our very first, you know, having Kelly Flanagan on. Right. We were right. like, oh my God. Like we were like, you know, kind of freaking author out of a little Lovable, bit. A, a author book, of right? the book Lovable, which was so impactful for, uh, all, of for, for all of us. And yeah. so all of a sudden Kelly's on the show and we're like, we were like we, giggly eyed. Yeah, we we're like, oh. The first few minutes, we're like, ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then to have Ben Bergeron oh, yeah. uh, and yeah. to have this guy that I had, his book was one of the top two most impactful books for me of, of a, from a couple of years ago. It continues to be. I still talk about just yesterday with a client, I brought up his book, Chasing Excellence, uh, and how the impact that that's had on, on me as well. Uh, but when he talked about the five mindsets. Oh. Uh, and that piece around the notion of that most people aim for the third mindset, right? So the lowest mindset being victim. Uh, then you got the pessimist. And he says, most people, they see optimist as, oh, I've made it. I'm an optimist. That's that's what life is supposed to be. And he says, no, 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 no. That's that's not where you want to be. You want to be the realist. Because yeah. the realist doesn't allow external circumstances to affect him. Because external circumstances are just that. Well, that's what it is, it right? Is, and, yeah. and now it's what do I make of it? As you taught me to say, right? It's it's not. It is what it is. It's it it is, it is what, what you I make, make it, it to exactly. be. Exactly. And and that's what the realist says. The yeah. realist just says this is what it is. Now what am I going to do? Right. Uh, right. And how am I going to respond? And then this notion of the warrior. And what I loved about the warrior mindset, which is 
bring it on. Because this is how I grow, right? right? Like the warrior yeah. goes, hardship is coming. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, not ready. Su- I'm not a sucker for punishment. I'm not out there looking for hardship. But when hardship comes, I understand this is not happening to me. This is happening for me, yeah. right? I get to experience this. And yeah. through this hardship, I'm going to grow. So bring it. Yeah. yeah. And what I loved about that as well was so he powerful. wasn't saying you live in the warrior mindset. Right. You you live in the, you, ideally, you live in the realist mindset and every once in a while when needed you go to the warrior yeah so good right you pull out your sword so and then you go back to the realist and so that was one of the lessons what about for you what were some of the big lessons i I think for me what has been the most when i think about again there's so many great moments it's hard to to uh to reduce it down to even just a, a handful uh for me personally how how the journey and the evolution of the show has impacted my own understanding of the world and how it works uh you know we 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 introduce the the quadrant model early on right the figuring out your values figure out what makes you happy uh develop a vision for your life using the four natural elements as a starting point and then define or or refine or or, or put into practice the spiritual practices or the the rituals that will help support the kind of life that you want and i thought that was the model right right, right. and it is at what and we're going to be unpacking this in shows to come that that's actually just one of four layers to the. It's a quadrant within a, a quadrant. It's a quadrant within a quadrant. It's a wheel within a wheel. <laughs> but to me, it's again this notion of when you set your heart, position your heart, your spirit, your mind to understand, to ask the question, to lean in. It's often going to lead to things that you never, ever imagined. Uh, And uh, uh, so I'm excited about uh, uh, being able to unpack sort of, again, what we're learning. There's so many others that are sharing great stuff uh, out there. And we're we're happy that we're able to throw our hat in the ring and be part of that. Um, But I'm excited about sharing what's to come. You know, it's just as we already look back on the first couple of months or the first, you know, let's say 10 episodes and we go, we're just scratching the surface 100%. uh you know who knows this time next year as we look back here and go man we're we're still like there's so much to lean in on yeah absolutely exciting so, so let me ask a, a little bit of an out-of-the-box type of question if if the podcast was a person all right so if okay. the living richly podcast was a person and they were sitting right here beside me because they would like me more uh they'd be sitting right because <laughs> you know that to be true Hey, I got radical, even Stu liked me better. Like I got he, radical self acceptance. You don't I'm need. Okay. That's I, right. You're good. Okay. But if the podcast was a person and was sitting here beside us right now in studio, yeah. What advice do you think the podcast would give a person, one of our listeners who's currently at a crossroads in their life? What a weird question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding, Eric. It's a good question. It's an out of the box question. I, I think that the. Uh, if the podcast was a person, it would be saying to our listeners and to us uh, that this is for you, mm. that this isn't just for someone else, that this isn't just, oh, this is really neat for someone else, but but this is for you, that there is a life waiting for you yeah. uh, that begins with that radical self-acceptance, uh, but this is achievable, this is doable, you don't need a whole bunch of things to fall into place in order for it to happen. But this can be you as much as it is anyone else. Oh, so good. So good. I uh, I would answer that question by saying, like, I think the podcast would say to that person standing at a crossroads, like, wake up and rise up, right? Yeah. Like, there's there's so much more to life than just existing, than just taking up, you know, space and energy. Um, you're meant to live a great life. You're meant to live a rich life. And the time is now. Uh, start taking life by the reins, stop waiting, and start creating your best. There are so uh, many voices and so much bullshit that just weighs us down. And when we break free from that, uh, then all of a sudden this we we start to see it everywhere, yeah. living in purpose, living fully, all of this stuff. Uh, you begin to see it just it just shows up as we are deliberate uh, by hearing the voice that we need to hear and and shutting out the voices that have not been supportive to us. Uh, and speaking of voices that have not been supportive to us or of us, uh, we, we talk, and I, again, another leader yesterday talking about the, the strength of the inner critic and how uh, that yeah. inner voice, uh, right, where we beat ourselves up and we hold ourselves back and we, we, we talk ourselves out of greatness on a regular basis, uh, that, that if there's a voice we need to stop listening to, 
it's the voice of criticism. It's the voice of self-judgment. And, and by that, I don't mean losing sight of self-awareness or, or being present to areas that we may want to transform and lean into in our lives. But w- what if we awoke, instead of listening to that inner critic, which a lot of folks say, but that inner critic has served me well. And I'm yeah. like, mm, perhaps. but it's First a season. For a season, but even like think of the damage that inner yeah. critic has done, even if it's helped you achieve goals, even if it's helped you do things that perhaps you wouldn't have done otherwise, it has left pro it's left you marked. It's left you with a damaged self-esteem, a damaged view of yourself. Uh, um, you're, you're probably looking at yourself in, in that I'm not enough, right? Um, it, it, not only do we need to silence that inner critic on our journey to living our best life, but it's about learning to awaken our inner champion where we talk to ourselves, Rob, all the time, Yep. right? Like, and I say that not because we're <laughs> losing our minds, but the self-talk like is happening all the time. Why not make it more life-giving? Why not make it more positive? Why not make it more empowering? Uh, and as a result, begin to achieve things you never thought were possible. Okay, you asked an out-of-the-box question. Let me ask an out-of-the-box question. 10 years from now. Yeah. Now, I recognize that, you know, we can't even predict. Again, I already said this, the journey. We don't even know what's around the next corner. 10 years from now, the podcast is still talking to us. It's still a person is talking to us. Uh, but what would you hope to see uh, uh, what would be the thought? What would be the message? What would be, uh, how would you be seeing this whole living your best life movement uh, 10 years from now? What would you want to see? What would you want people to be saying has been the impact? All of that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I would hope, and dare I say it might sound a little bit grandiose, but that that this podcast changed people's lives, oh, that, that it altered the trajectory of people's experience and their journey, that it was a source of both inspiration that lit a fire in them or perhaps relit a fire that had been extinguished through life's hardships and not just inspired them, but informed them with practical tips and strategies about how to actually go about doing that so that it spoke. I would hope that it would that people would say it spoke to my my heart, it spoke to my spirit, it's it it spoke to my mind, and it it uh, it encouraged me and and literally gave me the tools to abandon a life of mediocrity, to abandon a life of ho hum nine to five grind, and actually pursue a, a life that at the time I didn't even think was possible. Oh, that would I be that. that would be my hope. Yeah, and I I think of it as you know I, sometimes I reflect back and you know thirty years ago we sometimes you watch an old movie and uh, not an old movie a movie from thirty years ago which is <laughs> what we would be like wow that's thirty years old <laughs> uh, but we sometimes watch some of these movies and we think wow people used to say that people used to do that people used to think that way and you know or just some of the things that you look at uh, i hope that in 10 years people will be looking at a lot of what the message was and will be like wow people used to think that people used to people used to be anti-vulnerable or you used to not really believe that you could live your best life that that this becomes such a the message we have today which seems to be an outlier message for many becomes the absolute normal people go uh Duh, of course I can live my best life. Of right. course I can do this, that, and the other thing. I hope that's really what happens. Yeah, 100%. Listen, uh, as we begin to wrap up today, Rob, who is a guest uh, that you would love to have on the show, whether they're a historical figure or a current thought leader? Who is someone you would really love to have on the show? And if you had them on the show, what would you ask? Wow. Them? So I, I, I've got two that I come come to mind right out of the uh, gate. Uh, one of them is going to be people that be like, what? <laughs> Uh, Jesus. What? <laughs> really? Are, yeah. you, are you cursing right now? Or no, is it, okay. I, I, so, you know, here, well, here was, yeah, Jesus. No. And you know, when I, I thought about, I thought, ah, oh, that's such a silly ant. No, actually the more I thought about it, it's, we have had, uh, you know, again, whether you believe that Jesus was a real person or, you know, mythology, whatever the case might be, however, but the idea of the words of Jesus have been interpreted by so many and oftentimes, if dare I say, maybe all the time, those words are interpreted in such a way that it supports their ideology. Right. And I would love to hear uh, from the master's mouth himself yeah, of yeah. saying, you know, this is really the message that I, and I, the message I was trying to deliver. 
my sense is, but I'm also interpreting his words, my sense is is that uh, his message is very similar to what the message is of the Living Richly movement. Well, well, you know, whether you believe that Jesus was a historical figure or whether he represented something right. even greater uh, as a story, again, at the end of the day, he still quoted a saying, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I don't think anything could summarize the heart of living richly no. even more. And and as old as scholars of Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. Are we scholars? Uh, well, so I yes. am. I, I certainly scholars? did. I did do so. I, I, I have no ability to use that language now, but I did study it's it. It's funny. In, there's so many words I would use to describe you, Rob, and scholar is not one of them. And I oh, hold oh, you in high. Oh. No, I hold you in such high esteem, but it's not something that I would put on you. But Well, young Michelle, <laughs> let me explain to you. Yeah. The 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 uh, the the word that we often even uh, transcribe as as abundantly, I've come to give you life more abundant, is actually the the better interpretation of that word is I've come to give you life to the fullest. Yeah, and and I think that's that's why I I just I would be so fascinated to hear him give the interpretation of his words himself yeah. again if he's if you know that was another one for me would be jay shetty uh yeah, more recent one and uh, so yeah, yeah and absolutely i i'm just such a passion i love his his uh his uh instagram uh wendy was the one that introduced me to him but i'm fascinated some of the guests that he has on his show uh i just i would love to sit down with him and just hear from a guy who you know one of his books uh you know living uh, life as a monk uh uh just what it was like for him to go from that world to now where he is literally on a stage uh, and and impacting so many people, I would be just it would be a fascinating conversation for sure. What about you? Uh, well, I I mean, there's several, but uh, I'll keep it quick here because we're going to start running out of time. But Elizabeth Lesser would be one that I'd love to have on the show. So Elizabeth, if you're listening, yeah. if this gets out to you, uh, 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 for two books, one called Broken Open, where she talks about the twice born, and uh, what she's book. talking about is all of us are born once. Uh, right. As we're born into the world, but not everyone is twice born. And the twice born is folks that wake up to this notion of there is a, a higher existence or better life available to me than just the nine to five yeah. grind. Would love to uh, dive into that with her and highly recommend that book. And also we'll put all this in the show notes. Her uh, more recent book that I read of hers has just blown my mind called Cassandra Speaks. Uh, what if women wrote more of the history that we know and how different life would be? Anne Lamott is another one. Great, great author that I really respect. Uh, she wrote uh, a book on prayer. Uh, wow. No, help. Uh, thanks. Wow. Basically, the three types <laughs> of prayer. I need help, guidance, uh, gratitude, um, and just awe. And uh, she summarized spirituality for me so nice, so powerfully in that book. And then the the last one being a more recent influence, which is Rain Wilson yeah, of the Office of days. Like uh, you guys remember his character. What was his character's name again uh, on the show? I'm going to forget right now in this. Point. Point. Thank, you, Thank Steve. you, Steve. Steve saves the day. Uh, but Rain Wilson, a most a very unlikely source for me anyway, of changing my view or expanding my view uh, of the world. And actually, I credit him with triggering uh, what I referred to earlier was was the expansion of how I see the quadrant yeah. model. Uh, he he was a big influence. He His book Soul Boom, uh, highly highly recommend. Would love to have all of the aforementioned people on the show. If you're watching, Jesus, we understand you may be unavailable. <laughs> 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 I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> All right, as as we prepare to land the plane, let, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about some things that our listeners can expect to see uh, this coming year. This is officially now the start of season two. Yep. Uh, Jesus will not be showing up, but a lot of exciting things will be happening on the show. Uh, and- <laughs> Sorry, that was good. Yeah. That was, that was, right. that was pretty, <laughs> let's that was compose pretty funny. Yeah, let's was compose it? ourselves. Let's but yes, yeah, so what you won't uh, don't expect don't is expect Jesus. to see Jesus. But we've got some other really great <laughs> but, guests lined up uh, that we're really excited about. And what I'm also excited about is with now uh, really this being a show of four co-hosts uh, that you're going to see us mixing it up uh, a, a lot, right? So there'll be shows where all four of us are together discussing an issue. Uh, sometimes it'll be just the two of us. Uh, other times it'll be Kate and Wendy. Uh, approaching issues from a more female perspective. And then there's going to be times where it's like Rob and Wendy interviewing a guest or Kate and I interviewing a guest. So you are expect to see a lot of uh, uh, kind of leveraging yeah. the different personalities I, that make up the fact, show. In fact, 
the next show that we're going to, you're going to be able to see if you're subscribed to the podcast, you of course get notification. The next show is going to be a show where Wendy and I get to interview somebody that Wendy has known for many years. Yeah. Uh, Janine Chiron, who is just absolutely going to be a powerful story and so excited for that one. So yeah, there's going to be lots of great guests. We're continuing to work on guests, uh, having people on the show. We want to hear the stories of others. Uh, we certainly, you know, we invite those of you that are listening. If you've got a, a story that you would love, love to share. We'd love to get that feedback. And, you know, we can't promise that people will be on the show, but we are always open to hearing what others, uh, the journey of what other people are doing. This isn't just about us. That's so right, right. I think that's something we can absolutely is going to be a part of what we see in the in the next year. I'm also really excited about uh, the resources that are currently under development coming your way soon, uh, designed to help you build your best life, including what I'm really excited this about, good. which is a 15 day uh, life vision challenge. This yep. will be a guide with re- daily resources made available to help you actually map out what your best life looks like. Taking some of the best lessons that have been shared over the last year and what we're learning and what our guests have uh, have brought to the table and making that available as a guide for you to literally map out your rich life. What does living richly literally mean to you? And uh, although it's not available just yet, it's currently under development. If you want to be among the first in line to hear about it when it does become available, we're going to ask you to email us right now at info at livingrichly.me and just put the words 15 day challenge in the subject or in the body of that email and we'll make sure that you're first to hear about it. Yeah. So make sure you continue to, to send us your comments Uh, Continue to share out the uh, episodes and the podcast. Tell your friends, tell your enemies. uh, (laughs) Let everyone know that this is something that is here that can absolutely impact their life. Share how it's impacted your life. Uh, We really do appreciate everyone who has decided to be part of the Living Richly Nation. Yeah, absolutely. How you can help us continue to get the word out. As Rob says, share, uh, like on all of our social media platforms. We're so easy to find. Just search the uh, hashtags living richly or the hashtag living richly nation and we'll pop right up we invite you to join our our, our uh, youtube community that has just been exploding as of late uh, we went from hundreds of uh, a couple of hundred subscribers to thousands and uh, we invite you to be part of that as well uh, and sh- certainly liking the content makes a big difference but we're going to ask you those of you that are big fans of the show share it out let's get the message out there let's make sure that we're letting people know that this is available to them as a resource resource uh, to live their best life. Uh, Rob, closing thoughts. If uh, As we wrap up for today, and again, we're so uh, grateful to uh, the Living Richly Nation for your support, but if you were to sum up, in, in encapsulate in one sentence or two, the essence of the Living Richly message for you, for our listeners, what would that be? Uh, I think I could sum it up in one word. The, the, the word is hope, mm. uh, that it's not over. It's not done for you. It's not something, again, as I said earlier, that is good for someone else, but not for you. Uh, Your best days are not behind you. Uh, They are ahead. Uh, That there is a life that you can live, that you can experience, that the fullness of all of it is there ready for you. It's around the next corner. It's the next moment. It's the next sunrise, whatever that might be. But allow that that notion of hope to permeate everything that you are are uh, feeling right now in this moment to know that there is that opportunity to live your best life. Uh, That's powerful, powerful. Hope is the currency we all long for. Uh, I would echo the same thing. Your best days truly are ahead of you. The life you've always dreamed of is just there waiting to be discovered. Stop waiting. Start creating. The time is now. Life is short. Go for it. Uh, You're going to experience things you've never experienced before if you lean in. Folks, thank you so much for joining us again on the Living Richly Podcast. Uh, Keep listening, keep sharing, and we'll see you next week.